right. Okay, so we are laughing because I just sat here and recorded like five minutes with no audio. Because whoever is producing this show Fire them. is a dope. Fire them. <laughs> it's not working out anymore. You, give, just a good, about you drugs. give them a good chance. We just talked about drugs. Clearly I'm going to have to talk to my producer. Yeah. Say, like, what do you want, man? Mm-hmm. So this is a breakout episode. Actually, I'll, I'll do even better because I stumbled through that anyway. So this is great. You I was think this like, is better? So you think oh. this opening is better? Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, better. totally. Because right. first I was like, oh, uh, well, because tonight and then later and then I don't know. Yeah. So now, but now we're having a breakout but issue. But now you just said all that we're again. A, we're, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, is it really? Go ahead. I got to stop being so transparent with people, right? Right. That, that, so, that's when it, gotta, no, gotta, they never would have known because know, you weren't showing know, it. You're I like, know. hey, you guys don't know this, but here's what I did. I know. I'm just so I honest. I'm not going to ruin this one like I ruined the I'm last one, an, but an now guy. I'm ruining this anyway. So honest. I got I to stop being so honest with people. And so this is a breakout episode. We're just going to talk about something that would normally have been part of the episode on drugs, which will be coming out. And what we do is we like to do our uh, libertarians on 25 issues. And we talk about a particular issue every single week. And then along with that issue, we find a a bill that we want to talk about or maybe a social topic. In this particular case, I was going to talk about a bill up in New York um, that was related to COVID. And it turns out that bill is no longer in session. So we're actually now going to shift gears a little bit. And we're going to talk about media and fact checking because there was some media that I saw related to this bill and I watched it and I was like, what? So I think now what we're going to do is we're going to show that video clip and then um, and then you, and then we'll have a conversation about that video clip and about media and fact checking because I thought that there was some really good insight. That All right, now I have not seen this. So oh, you haven't almost, seen it? No. Oh, perfect. This, so this is almost like a social thing for so he doesn't us even because know. I don't even know what's going he on. He doesn't even know. Like I could, give, I could be getting ready to show him like nudes or something. He has no idea. I'm not going to. I was going to say, is is that an option? Because if so, I'm just going to bolt out now. So so let me pull up my, uh, let me pull up my media source here. And let's see, let's, let's get things set up here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see here. There we are. So It's posts being shared all over social media. Several viewers alerted us about it. It is a bill in the New York State Assembly that some claim would pave the way for COVID concentration camps. Is there any truth to this? That's tonight's fact check. Here's the screen grab that was shared with us. When I started looking into it, I noticed even a Rochester City Council member had shared it. According to the Post, the New York State Senate and Assembly will vote on a bill on January 5th. If passed, it would allow the governor or Department of Health to remove and detain cases, contacts, carriers, or anyone suspected of presenting a significant threat to public health. So I looked up the bill on the New York State website, Assembly Bill A-416. There it is, a bill initially introduced in 2015 by downstate Assemblyman Nick Perry and reintroduced in every session since. You can read it for yourself. It talks about removing and detaining people who are a threat to public health. So I reached out to Assemblyman Perry's office. Assemblyman Perry says conspiracy theorists and those who spread misinformation online are once again trolling on social media, posting concocted stories about A416. Here's some background on the bill. The Assemblyman's communication director says the bill was introduced to address public health concerns involving people infected with Ebola, who had entered the United States. He says the bill has been grossly misrepresented online, even though some provisions in the bill may be applicable to the COVID-19 pandemic. That has prompted Assemblyman Perry to strike the bill and remove it from the calendar. That happened today. So when it comes to the claim that the state assembly and Senate will vote on a bill in January that would pave the way for COVID concentration camps in New York, that is false. All right. Okay. What was your first thought of that? Well, okay. So we did, we got, we prepared to do that bill. I remember, right. oh, but we had this break right. over the past couple of weeks. Right. So when they start going, I'm like, wait a minute, I remember this. I remember that we read through this and the yeah. point was that we were going to attack this and go, hey, what is it really getting at? Right. Okay. Now through this, I don't know what direction you want to go with this, but I am looking at this and he's like, oh, no, that was old. But he reintroduced it in 2021 again. 
multiple so this, times. Like multiple, there was like three sessions. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, wait a minute. So he might be trying to say, no, no, that was from before, right? Which would hold true if you dropped it when Ebola didn't become a problem, right? But he kept bringing it up, yes, because he knew that ultimately it would apply, yes. So and and so I I, I honed in on this. They were like, well, our fact check says that's false, and I was like, wait a minute. He only dropped it after trolls and conspiracy theorists came out and said that these provisions were applicable. Now, when I don't know, did you read the bill? Yes. So I remember reading the bill, and initially it did not say Ebola only. It said like communicable disease. Yes, or something. It, right. It's very broad range. So even though it might have been introduced for the purposes of dealing with a potential Ebola crisis. Mm -hmm. It, it was, was very broad. It's very in general. In a way that it was very much applicable. Everything that was applicable, I think, if I remember correctly, everything in there that was applicable to Ebola was applicable to COVID. Yes, because we were going to attack it on the basis yep. of COVID, not on the basis of right. Ebola, because it also applied. Right. Let me ask a question, though, because maybe I'm missing something. So when she said that's false, mm -hmm. is she saying that, no, the bill was not saying that, or is she saying that him saying that? Which so, was false? I think what she was saying was the claim that this could open up COVID concentration camps was false. And the reason she was saying oh, that... Oh, okay. So, so she and, was basically taking the assemblyman side. Right, but but here's, oh. my, here's my problem with it. Okay. She was saying it's false because this assemblyman has removed the bill, but he didn't remove the bill until people started so she was only saying the only thing that's false is that it was supposed to be covered in january that's not true it's not getting covered so, in january but it would have been had he not pulled i it. think proper reporting would have been to say it was true that it was applicable to covid mm -hmm. and then once people made a big st uh they, they complained about it then the assemblyman went and withdrew it right and now it is no longer true. This is no longer, this particular bill right. is no longer a concern. That would have been proper news reporting. And so I'm attacking them and saying, you are playing a little bit loose with the facts because he has withdrawn it. Now you can say, oh, well, that was false. You know, and I'm like, it's, it's almost like if I said, I am going to go to Tubbs house and beat him up. And then. I tell my wife and my wife calls his wife and says, my husband is on the way to beat your husband up. And then on the way, somebody intervenes and, and calls me up and calms me down. Mm -hmm. And then I say, you know what? You're right. I don't need to need to go. And I turn around and I go back home and then I never show up to your house. And then somebody else later says, DL was about to go beat up tough. And I go, no, no, I wasn't. I was that's, actually okay. I, I was, so, you know, like I, so I might have been on the way, but I wasn't going to fight. No, that wasn't really going to happen. Yeah. Like I wasn't like, doing that. You know. That's crazy. So basically, that phone call was, you know, Tubbs has his gun right there. Like his right. gun is right there with right. him. So right. that should have been what that phone call was. Right. Like you go, right. I'm going to go back to the house. Now. I think I'm fine. Right. But I see what you're saying here. You're you're saying that it only became false because now it's no longer there. Right. So it's not a matter of what he was saying inside. It's it's not right. a bill. It's not acting. Yeah. He didn't crazy. Actually, nothing in the bill was disputed. In fact, in the news media there they said well these provisions and that's what i thought here. when i'm watching is i thought she was kind of saying no this dude's wrong this right. here it is right here and that's why so, i was like wait a minute but but then they didn't fact check the assemblyman they fact checked the conspiracy theory the conspiracy theory was correct yes this bill was could there. lead to it now the, now it was correct in a sense that it could lead to it mm -hmm. the question of course is always would it there are plenty of um, there are plenty of bills like this bill in particular. This bill went through session after session after session, and like it clearly wasn't getting passed, right? Because it kept getting introduced, so right. it was clearly not passing. Um, so in that particular sense, like it wasn't made law just yet. Right, but but the fact is, the bill when you read it does have provisions that could put people into like quarantine. Like it didn't say camp in the bill. It wasn't right, like, right. Yep. You can go to a corner. A but she even camp. covered the things about, but, hey, anybody but, that's a carrier or, right. or suspected of. Right. And it said quarantine. Yep. Right. Which is effectively like, oh, okay, it may not be a camp in the mind. Like when you think of a, a concentration camp, you're probably thinking of like the Japanese in 1940s and there's like wire and there's like a building. Like, is it going to be that? No, it might be like, okay, we've commandeered this hotel right. and you're quarantined to this hotel. And just because the um, the amenities are nicer, it doesn't, you know, like if you're forced to stay, stay somewhere, you're forced to stay somewhere. It's imprisonment no matter right. what. Right. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, I, I don't care that they have a nice couch and the Japanese didn't get one. 
forced being somewhere is forced being somewhere. So right now is our kid. And that provision because, was there. Because the, the the law is a mess. Right. Okay. Like I said, as we went through that. Um, and here's the thing, though. I, I think that this goes to show something. Bringing things to light can change things. Yes. If we stay informed. I don't care what this fact. I don't care. I tend to. Many right. times fact checkers are oh, just they're throwing their opinion. Oh, I don't like this. And so so they find something to support what they want it to be. Right. So the bigger point about this is forget about what that lady said on the news. Okay. The bigger point behind this is that there was horrible legislation that was put up. Yep. It got exposed. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh no, no, no. Okay. Who okay, who cares what he lies about? Say, oh, that wasn't my point. Who cares? It's gone right. now. Right. So I look at that and I go, you know what? The conspiracy theorists, libertarians. So um, they kind of had to think of that. Right. You know, it became effective. Right. So this goes to show you they want an uninformed public. Yes. Because yes. if they didn't get informed, this would have right. passed. I truly right. believe had it had it no might've. light. But yeah. And for COVID, it might have. Yep. Ebola? Okay, I get you. You can make an argument like, ah, we weren't as worried about Ebola. But, but a lot of people are worried about COVID. So what happens if you read this and next time it goes, hey, change the language to COVID. Right. Then maybe they go, you know, that's a good point. That's a good point now because right. we see what COVID right. is doing. So I love the fact that through this, the only thing that truly might have stopped that, truly, because now it's now it's out. I'm going to try it yep. again because it got exposed. So that tells you they want us to be in the dark. Right. Because the more that we find out and the right. more we start saying something, where they go, yep. oh, that's a bad idea. That's not going to work I, anymore. I will disagree with you on one point. You well, said, you can be wrong, but go ahead. You said that, uh, you know, forget the woman, you know, the news reporting doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't care, like, no, I don't care what she's and, doing about that. Because she, she wasn't telling in the sense. I, I, I do think that they uh, it does matter because it matters because how many people watch that and said, oh, yeah, oh, see, no big deal. Yeah, but, yeah but, no, no, but I was just and I think her outcome. I was like, whatever I, she right. says, I don't care. And I think right. what That's we need true. to do, we need to be wise and we need to say, we need to not only expose these bills, mm -hmm. but when the media comes out and they pull this little shady, like, oh, see, it totally was false because like he pulled the bill and like it was no big deal. Like we need to come out and say, no, there was some truth to it. Now, it may not have been to the level that the conspiracy theorist said, right? Like somebody may not have necessarily been like, oh, this is a great COVID bill because it looks like the bill was just basically cycling through until it got passed. Right. And it started in 2015, so long before COVID was a problem, mm -hmm. right? And it just turned out that the bill was applicable. And I think, it, it, well, I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But I think what we need to, we need to be wise and understand, like, what order things happened in. The order in this particular case mm -hmm. was there was a bill for Ebola. Right. It didn't pass, and it kept getting recycled. Along came COVID, which became a serious problem in the country. And I mean that by um, there's, you know, there's a lot of fanfare about it. There's all kind of bills and all right. kind of clamoring to do something and all that. And so then this bill was re up. What was up? So was it intentional for COVID? No, it was not. Was it still up? Yes, it was. Did they have provisions that applied to COVID as much as it did Ebola? Yes, it did. Were some of those provisions things that people are concerned might actually get put into place? Yes, they were. Even if it wasn't intentional for COVID, it was still there and mm -hmm. it was up for vote. And if it got until, passed, it was still applied to COVID. Until people had complained yep. enough. And then the media reached out. And I don't I don't know if they pulled the bill before or after the media reached out, right? So okay. a, all right. So I don't know that order of change. But everything else I know, the only reason it got pulled was not because it was no longer needed. And they said, Oh, you know, Obol is long gone. This no, because that, that case would have been dropped five years ago, right. six years ago. It got dropped because people started making conspiracy theories out of it. And some of, and to some extent, there was truth some to truth those, in it. Yep. Right? Was it full on? Was somebody really looking to make concentration camps for COVID? That's debatable. Okay. There might be some people that want it. Do you know one of the right? things that makes a conspiracy theory a valid? Because sometimes there's a valid conspiracy theory. Right. Like some are crazy. They're just, right. But those ones that have that hint of truth where you go, hey, wait a minute. Right. And this is one of those. This is one of those you look at and go, wait a minute. You know how very easy the jump from here to here is? Right. And not so much because we've already seen it. Right. Now, what I do want to explain, though, is that when I was saying that I don't care what she said, it wasn't like I'm, well, I don't care about the media saying. What I'm saying is I'm dismissive because she's wrong in the report that she right. did. So I was like, you know what? Put that aside. I don't care what she's saying. Here's what I'm saying about right. this. So I was not saying that. Hey, the media's fine. They can present right, all their right. lies. Right. No. I just um, I, I just wanted to, to to make sure it was very clear yeah. that it was. It's very important that we stay on top of we the people. We 
are the last line of defense against the government and actually the news media because the news media is in many times in bed with them or they're a kind of apologist. She basically was an apologist yes. for this bill rather than doing her job and saying, no, you had this bill and it might have been voted on, even if it wasn't intentionally made for COVID, it might have been voted on and it might have actually had this effect that people were concerned about. Now, she did here, not say that. She brushed it all under. What it. happened there explains this right here. And let me kind of. All right. So I remember, you know, I didn't understand the podcasting. Right. Remember the first time we came and did one at your house, you had all of us candidates here and we were right. all talking. I'm like, OK, you know, whatever. And they asked me to do some other ones. I'm like, I don't get it. And I even start telling people, I don't understand the purpose of uh, of these podcasts everywhere. Right. But then they start explaining like, hey, no, this is a way because the news that we're getting isn't the right. news. And so right. there's been a number of these type of podcasts start revealing things. They kind of go, right. here's some real stuff that's happening. Yep. Here's some real bills. Right. And so I started realizing, you know, it's funny, this right here and it's other similar ones like this is needed now because you realize you can't just flip on the news right. and go, oh, there's the truth. There's what's right. going on. It's not happening anymore. Right. Because they're just as biased. So here, I've got a comment here that I made on Twitter a long time ago. Very, very applicable here. Like how long are we talking? Um, How long ago? I made this in December. So like ages ago. Oh, dude, ago. dude, dude it, it, was, it was a month ago. You made it. Sound, when you said that, I'm like, dude, he said it's like four years ago. This dude, right. a month ago, you said this. I am prescient. Go. A month ago. So, you, a month ago, Liberty Dad Pod said... People will laugh at the alarmist for what seems implausible to the masses. And then again, if successful, for having rung the alarm for events that never occurred. Only in failure is an alarmist appreciated. So what I'm getting at is people Explain will- Explain that better. People yeah, so will people, laugh at the alarmist people, for what seems implausible. Yeah, so- Okay. No, I got that part. I'm, just, I'm the, breaking it down. So I, okay. The, 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 the bill that we just talked about, yep. like the conspiracy theorist, they were alarmist. Got it. They were the alarmists that said, hey, hey, there's this bill and it could put us in concentration camps, right? And I said, people will laugh at them for what seems impossible because it seems impossible Because the, the time. bulk of people were like, and then, that's crazy. If they're successful, they'll be laughed at again for having rung the alarm for events that never occurred. So people are now again, you know, they're like, oh, well, this turned out not to be even true. But it was because of the alarmist mm -hmm. that it's no longer possible to be true. Okay. So then they get made fun of because they're like oh you oh, guys see? are just a bunch of conspiracy theorists mm -hmm. like see there was nothing here even though it was the conspiracy theorist who got the bill pulled in the first place yep. that was why that bill got pulled now would that bill have ever actually put somebody i don't know you don't know but guess what now it won't exactly but you know the Boom. problem the problem with this type of stuff is there are so many things that two years ago two and a half years ago we'd be like no no no, that's right. never and now we're looking at it going right Ooh, now yeah. there's certain things we can't just jump yeah. out there and go no that's never going to happen yeah. because it has and so i think it takes this to kind of go whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute yep where is this going i'm always the what's next guy yeah and, and that right there is a perfect example yeah. of if you're and not then, careful only in failure is an alarmist appreciated. So if people had not been successful in getting that bill pulled, then it may have actually been voted on and it might have been turned into law. And it, and once something is in place, there it is law, then there's always the possibility that it could be enforced. Yep. And in many cases, uh, depending on what it is, I mean, not everything gets, I mean, a lot of things are no longer enforced. Maybe they once were, now they're not. Some things get put into place and it's arguable whether there's much yeah, because, of enforcement. Yeah, they don't tend you know. to get repealed. They, they just right. sit there. You know, so there, there are many laws that are just kind from, of From chilling. my understanding, there's still a law in the books that says that when you come into the Atlanta city limits, you're supposed to stop and honk your horn. And oh, that, really? law, that law was put in place when vehicles were opposed to horse-drawn carriages. Oh. And so if you had a vehicle, you had to stop and honk your horn, and you would be given a kind of, they, they'd bring you through the city. Oh, wow. And so from my understanding, that law's still in place. Wow. So technically, somebody could oh, stop yeah. on the highway, start honking yeah. their horn. Oh, yeah. hey. There's a lot of laws, and some of them, they, like in today's society, they are very, very absurd. Maybe they had a point back, back then. Back then. Yeah, <clears throat> right. like I understand what they were saying back then. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, but... But but the 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 gist of this particular yep. short episode is to let people know to stay to continue to be watchdogs. Dig in, read the bills, figure them out. You know it was uh, it, it was probably conspiracy theorists in New York who were going through and looking at the the bills that were. How did you find it? I just saw a news article about it. I, okay, I think I saw it on Twitter. I see okay. a lot of stuff come across the line on Twitter, and uh, well, this particular bill actually did kind of get blown up because. Um, uh, it's very similar to the bill that we reviewed for Australia. Yes. Which had a lot and of that, Remember provisions. when we first said, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, it's all the same thing. At first I thought, I was <laughs> right. like, oh, wait, wait, we already did this one. I'm like, oh no, different place. Okay, right. never yeah. mind. Yeah, it's, it's America. Yep. Oh my God, right? Yeah. And, um, and by the way, 
that bill, because people are like, that would never happen here. That bill was written in 2015, before COVID. Mm -hmm. So there are people that were wanting already, to quarantine. Like they already people. wanted this as the plan. Right. And, they, they and COVID just happened to people. fit. Hey, this and, is perfect. And it is up to the people. It is up to the people to stay, to keep an eye on the legislation. So you are a candidate here in Jacksonville. I am. Right? If you become a city council member, mm -hmm. it will be up to people that voted you in, and people that were opposed to you too. Mm -hmm. It will be up to the people to keep an eye on the things that you might be writing or yep. supporting, Yep. right? And this is how we stop bad bills. Also voting in libertarian candidates. That's because a, that's they will be far to. less likely to support terrible bills. They'll probably be more likely and, to and, not support and you post know what, bills. You, you know what I found? Like, even for me, I'm like, you know what? A number of these things that come through, not only do I not support, I'm going to make this think about how, you know, this is coming through. Like, I, I'm, right. I'm all about, hey, you know, guys, hey, here's right. what they're trying to do. Right. Like, I, I think that libertarians have this idea of exposure also. Like, hey, right. this is a bad idea. They're trying to sneak this one through. So Let it be known. You're not going to like me for this. So For this? What do you think we've been so doing here already? You are, you are saying that as a city council member, mm -hmm. you would go in and if city other members try to produce or pass legislation mm -hmm. that you think is inappropriate and they bring it up, yep. that you will come out to the public and yes. tell them about yes. it. And yes, yes. Maybe get on a podcast and raise a stink. Oh, this podcast specifically? Any podcast. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. So you are basically saying you would be the Karen Ann Harlos of Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am. I'm, I am, I'm, by the way. We are distinct here. I am Karen Ann Harlos's campaign manager. He has nothing to do with her campaign um, if you're a libertarian and you're watching. So do not be mad. I just took an opportunity to have a little bit of fun because that is what I do. It's my podcast. So I get to do what I want, right? That is true. Um, so he but is it's just also, a victim. As, as being a guest on the podcast, right. I go, I ain't coming back there ever right. again because right. you're just mean. So, so just want to make sure that if you're watching and you happen to like the podcast, but you oppose... Uh, some of the internal things going on in the Libertarian Party. I was just making a, him the butt of a joke for fun. That's not uh, fun. Look, hold me accountable. Don't hold him. So, so but, uh, so it wasn't fun. but he is. But he is. But let me say, I, I thought you, you didn't denounce me though, did you? No, no. I, I you, should, you need to denounce me. I everything that I have ever there, said. I, I, I thought for a second there you were going to go look at Tub making a good stand to expose bad legislation. No, I think that's but a you did. great no, thing. No, you were no, using it as a joke. No, it was, it was a mocking no, for you. It, it, it went, no, it, it was don't try to joke. walk it back now. It's done. You've already, no, I you've already that, I need, explained I need the point of this. Social media. The point, the, okay. All right. Continue. But, no, it, it is a good thing. It's it's a good thing to uh, to want uh, your, the, the, your council members to come out and say, hey, this is what's going on here. Justin Amash does that all the time. He's a very good example of this. He will go and he will vote on a bill and then he will get on Twitter and he'll be like, here's how I voted. Here's why I voted for it. Bam, 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 bam. Now, he doesn't necessarily come out and tell you about every single bill. Right, yeah. It would take, it would like, he would never be, he would just always be tweeting. Right. Like, like 24 hours a day, never sleeping. But I'm also more of an advocate mm -hmm. of, hey, I just vote on this. This is bad. Right. I like the idea of beforehand. Right. But so, he hey, does you that know, too. You know, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, this is what's coming through. Yep. He does that ready. too. He'll say, this bill is not a good bill. Here's why. You know, uh, this is not appropriate. You know, you know, Congress is not supposed to have this kind of authority, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Right. Right. He does that. This is a good thing. And it needs to be normalized in our society that when we elect people, it doesn't matter. All jokes aside, it doesn't matter whether it's for city council, Congress, or um, a Libertarian Party position. We need to say, as a leader, I expect you to come back and tell me what's going mm -hmm. on. And if you think something is amiss or you think it should be supported, you need to get out and tell me why. Do you know... Because if I expect it, if there's a bill that you support, that you come out and say, DL, you might be a little, sit down for this one because you might be a little challenged, but I think you should support this particular bill. Here's why. And explain. Like, I, I, okay, there's there's two things to that. One is I don't think there's enough walking down the hall and winning people over to your side anymore. Right. Uh, there's not enough. Like, they're, right now in Washington, they're playing the game. Well, that's their side. Walk down the hall and convince them. Walk down the hall, knock on a door, say, I need to talk to you for a minute. Here's right. why this is a good or bad idea. Okay. The other side of this is, okay, so the reason that I'm running for city council was really kind of got started from an issue that we had right. that kind of mm -hmm. alerted me to what was going on in the city. So with that, here's, I kind of walked away with this feeling. And, and it's funny because the council member that got involved in mm -hmm. our issue is the very same seat that I'm running for now. Mm. It wasn't planned. It just, that's the way it works out by where I live and stuff. But the point behind is I really thought that 
council members should be an advocate for the people. Yes. They are not an <clears throat> advocate for the government. Correct. And when I sat there through this and we went through this meeting and, and the whole time I felt like this council member was very much making the city's argument against me. Right. And when, when I left there and I sent an email back to him and it's out there, I can always show it. Everybody wants to know, I still have it. And I made it's it. It's a public record. Good. Because if, you send, email, to him? I if did. you send an email, it's, to, yep, you're right. They, 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 sometimes so I'll send there. back and say, hey, by the way, this is public. Record. No, it actually puts it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's there. And you can go find it. I said, you know what? I said, I truly felt like um, I expect you to be an advocate for me, not an advocate mm -hmm. for the city. I feel like you kind of left me sitting out there by myself right. when all I really wanted you to do is even if I needed to work on my side, I expect you to kind of go, hey, but here's where he's at. Right. Here's what we can do. What yes. are some options? And he didn't. And so I've, I've always kind of felt that way, but this really kind of hit me. I'm like, you know what? I am not there to represent government. I am there to represent people. Right. And in turn, I become this liaison mm -hmm. in between people and government, basically. Because right. the government doesn't vote you in. The no, people do. the people do. And, it, and it's true across the board, mm -hmm. right? Even in our affiliate where I'm the chair, right? I am there to be an advocate to the members. I am not there to be an advocate for the rest of the officers and what they want to do. Right. I am there to say, all right, what do my members, what what are they looking for out of us? Exactly. And, and then else. I tell them you and can, I have regular conversations with the member. You can take what we have and kick it higher. Yes. That you say, okay, wait a minute. You don't, you, listen, you're not the chair of the state, but here's what you do. You go, hey, listen, we're having rumblings down here. Yep. You need to know this because this needs to be addressed. Yes. And, and that's kind of the idea behind yeah. it. But I think that if we are more open to saying, hey, I don't work for government, I work for people. Right. And if I work for people, when this stuff comes up, I go, hey guys, this is a bad right. idea right here. Unless it's an organization, like if I, let's say I started an organization and we'll call it the DL organization. Oh, that's good. Right? Fail. From Sorry, I already know. Right. Sorry. But, and, and, and I, and there's no mechanism for members other than what I say. So maybe I just say, and, and uh, no, I'm not going there, but. Um, but, but, but I, you know, like a nonprofit, let's say I create a okay. nonprofit. Right, we're going to do a nonprofit. We're, we're going to get right. away from that. We're going to try okay. to stay away from All these right. funny politics. All right. Cause, cause I think there's a broader point that I want to make. If, if I, I mean, it does apply there too, but that's Did not where say? I go. I swear to God. <laughs> so if I create a nonprofit and I want to help, uh, find feral cats and deal with them. Okay. Right. And I want to find them good homes. Okay. Right? I don't want them to be feral cats. I want them, I want to collect them off the street because mm -hmm. they're creating a problem. And that's my organization. I go out and I get people money. And, and I'm running this organization. If it's okay. my organization, then people can choose whether or not they want to support it. Right. Right. And I'm not necessarily an advocate for people. No, I'm you're an not advocate for your I'm organization. I'm an advocate for whatever the organization was d designed for. Yes. If it was designed for feral cats, mm -hmm. then I am an advocate for what I think. Basically, that you work best, for cats. Uh, basically. Yeah. yeah my, you know, my, my client is cats. You know, and I'm like, all right, I need to post about cats on the internet, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so... You work for the cats. Right. Effectively. Or the issue. Yes, I work yes, for the I'm saying, issue. Yeah. Your, right? your point is to be a liaison for the cat to the people. But if it's an organization where I'm elected uh -huh. in any, for any, you know, whether it's, whether it's a political party, whether yep. it's a, um, the city council, whether it's Congress, it doesn't matter. I'm an advocate for the people that voted me in. Right. That's and So I need to go to those people and say, what is it that you need my attention on? Yep. Right. So if it's a city you, council you member, you tell me what's important. Like we, you should never, ever feel like city council member is advocating for city council for over you. Yep. And, ever. And, and like we have these things that we've started scheduling <clears throat> out and all they're called fuss and discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I'm doing. I go around, we get a group of people together and we just kind of sit around and, and I'm very clear about what the point of this is. The point of this is not for me to tell you what's wrong with the city. The point is for you to tell me yes. what's wrong with the city. Right. Like, cause I, I have what I think is wrong, Right. but you know what? Not everybody's down with the things right. that I think are wrong. Some people yep. are like, Hey, I don't care about that. Tell me what about this? And I go, yep. and then here's what has to happen. I advocate for them, yep. which means tub, it doesn't matter even as a libertarian. Right. Okay, it, I I truly believe you know how I sit about freedoms and stuff like that. But if they a group of the citizenry comes to me and says this is where we're at, right. even if I don't like it, I gotta yeah. go. There's their desire. Right. There's their will. This is what yeah. we have to do here, and I have to support yeah. that. Even if I'm like, dude, that's not very, even if, dude, it's not very libertarian. Right. I believe that my libertarianism mm -hmm. comes into play for the type of things that people don't get involved with. Right. I, I and this is where I sit. Like, okay, so when I'm on city council. I'm like, okay, if you don't have a voice and you don't care, I want you to know where I'm defaulting to. Right. I'm defaulting to libertarian thinking. Right. I'm defaulting to personal freedoms, private property rights, something right. along those lines. 
Okay, if I hear nothing from y'all, you better know this is the direction I'm going. I'm right. voting against anything that's taxes, anything that's spending. I'm saying right. no. So let me ask you. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay. Here. This could. I, I don't want to tank your campaign or anything. Let's see. Uh, listen, you don't think I'm doing that all by myself. Okay. Fair all right. <laughs> Come on. So as a libertarian. Yes. You have certain beliefs. Yes. That government um should not be doing. Right. If the citizenry comes to you and says we want you to vote in favor of doing those things, will mm -hmm. you vote in favor of doing those things? I, I would have to say yes. Okay. Here, let me tell you why. We actually had an example that we talked about. Okay. Um, the, us candidates. I said, okay, private property rights. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was an issue where they, the the citizens of an area mm -hmm. were getting together saying, we don't want this to happen. We we want to speak up about this. And this is where it comes to a tight one because I'm like, private property rights, the owner of that property has a right to do whatever he wants. But if it comes back and they start going, hey, you know what? We have a right to kind of, and we started talking about like, how do we defend that one? How do we hold to private property rights? Here's what happened. So I said, there's got to be a way around this. There's got to be a way around this. There's got to be a way that both sides. So here's what ended up happening. That group of people said, what if we purchase the property? And then we can use it for, yes. Okay. Because now it's not about the government making, making the decision. Right. See, we have to be about, hey, citizens, what but, are your but ideas? what happens when there's not a good outcome? Listen, who's the outcome for? What if uh, what if all the citizens come up and say, we want this strip club shut down. You need to do whatever you need. You need do whatever you need. It's don't represent me. Up. I don't represent Tub. I represent the people. Right. So you would you would have, do... you know what I'm saying? There has to be uh, you know, so no, let me wait, ask hold you. on. There's the natural <clears throat> argument of. There's right. a natural wait a minute, why are you doing this? I would defend the other side because that's who I am. Right. Okay, what about this? And and you want to defend that, but ultimately it's I, I don't represent Tub. Okay. Right, right. No, I understand that. So let me ask you this. If you run mm -hmm. on a platform and say, I'm going to vote in this particular manner. Mm -hmm. Here is who I am. Here are the principles that I'm operating under. Mm -hmm. Are you not obligated to operate under those principles? And then those people voted you knowing that, you know, so knowing that, like if, if I said, I will never vote to forcibly shut down somebody's private property because right, right. I don't like it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the citizenry comes later and says, you know what? We actually want you to because we decided we don't like this particular business. Mm -hmm. Aren't you kind of in a conflict of what you told them you were going to do versus what you're okay. now going to do? And there, there's where the issue comes in. Like and, that's that's the issue. The issue is that I will default if you're not saying anything. I'm going to default to right. libertarianism. Right. Okay. But once again, when when does it become Tubbs' will and the people's will? Who do I represent? Right. But the question, I guess, is so it's a it's a, it's a conflict. It is. It's a, it's a tough one. You if you get voted in uh -huh. on that premise yep then you're voted in with the understanding like that like that, that club was made... dude i thought he was on my side right exactly so, yep you know like i might say well i voted you knowing that you were gonna i might say i voted you no voted for you knowing that you were going to support mm -hmm. these kind of things yep and now somebody else has basically become a squeakier wheel okay now that never bothers me i was just gonna like, say that like, like if there if there's more because if there's more people coming to you then i'm assuming you're going to address the more Hold people. Hold on, what, what are we calling more people? Here, here's why I say this. I, I, don't, I think sometimes we want a clear-cut answer and I don't think it's right. always there. So Let me explain it like this. Okay. Okay, in that if I'm saying, listen, I'm private property rights. Dude, no, we're not shutting this down. No, like, and, right. I, and I, can, I think I have a right to go, no, we're not going to do this. Here's why we're not going to do this. Right. And then just because a few people go, we don't like this, I'm probably going to stick to where I'm at in libertarianism. Oh, oh okay. okay. Okay, but now if you're saying, like there's this lot J here in town, it's a huge okay. backlash. Right. I think at that point right there, you go, all right, guys, you know okay. what? We have to. I, I don't think we okay. can ever take this. Well, just these few people. Shut okay, up. I misunderstood because yeah. I thought what you were saying, no, no, it almost says, sounded no. like it almost sounded like you were saying, look, if nobody says anything, I'm, I'm going to totally be a real libertarian. Yes. That's However, true. if you do say something, I'll do whatever you ask me. No, 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 no. no and I was like, be... well, wait a minute. Don't you have some principles that you're going to say? I'm sorry. I, I know I'm that a lot of you here. are complaining, but you voted for me under these principles, under and... this auspice. And I am not budging. I am not going to just shut this down just because right. you don't you think all the girls there are ugly. Yeah, because because here's the thing, once again, big city. Okay. Right. Unfortunately, it tends to happen if the right group makes the noise, these guys shift their thinking. I'm right. not worried about that. I'm okay. not worried about the right group. Uh, listen, we have we have well, You're talking about areas where there's some nuance and it, it you know, like city council is doing something, they're gonna make a decision mm -hmm. and then a lot of people come to you and they say, you might say, I think it's a good decision. Right. But it's, uh, uh, but there's some nuance where you could be convinced to say, well, I think it's a good decision, but my constituents have said, no, it's not. 
So therefore, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my my constituents. However, there are some issues where, hey, constituents, I told you who I was. Who I was. This is my default. And like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to stray for, you're gonna have to get me from my default. Okay. You're gonna have to you're Fair gonna enough. have to prove to me that hey, gotcha. tell this where your libertarian thinking is wrong. Gotcha. Okay. But also bear in mind because my position is at large it's the whole city right see if there's districts it's a little bit easier can i go well only these people get to fuss about something right as the city I, okay i got right so in order the way i see it in order for it to really be effective it's got to be a large amount of people to stray me from my libertarian thing right. it's gonna be a large pushback it says no 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 tough. We, this is this is not what we voted you for right okay now we can talk once again i think there's a lot of gotcha. types of conversation. Gotcha. There's, a, there's a lot of types of, okay, wait a minute, guys. How do we find this balance where government doesn't have to be, my, my default right. is, we don't want government involved right. at all. And that's why I said, I think that that one worked out perfect when they said, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. What if we raise the money? And uh -huh. I'm going to go, yes. Right. My first answer would always be, can y'all figure it out? Yeah. Figure Y'all okay. figure it out. So then, yes. we go back to what we originally oh. were saying, okay. which is, it becomes, in, it, it is, not becomes, it is, and stays a conversation between you and the constituent constituents mm -hmm. and it is not you defending what the city council wants right at any point nope so even still even if the constituents can, can i add want government something... agencies into that also right not just city council government agencies right. i'm not there to defend government agencies and right. that was part of my problem my right. problem was we were having a problem with the fire department Right. and the other various offices to the city and right. he took the side of those and pushed me aside Right. So I don't want to say just city council. I, I believe that I am there to speak and not to represent these other agencies of the city. I'm there to represent the people. Gotcha. I don't want to limit it okay. to city council. It, gotcha. it stretches out. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Go so that Sorry. makes that makes more sense. And um and again, I know we kind of strayed a little bit from well, we, the original yeah. topic. And we're supposed to be quick. There, and... Yeah, it was you know, I mean it was still quick. We're still okay. like at 30 minutes. Here, oh, all right. so okay. 30 minutes. All right. And so uh let's wrap it up. Okay. Um so be on guard. Watch out. Pay attention to what the what laws are being made that impact you. Not all of them impact you. I mean, you don't have to worry about if you live in New York, you probably don't have to worry about a bill in in California. But if you got the time, sure, talk about it, right? Uh, but definitely stay up on the bills that are in your area, mm -hmm. in your state, um, if definitely in your country, so at the federal level. And also, when you hear the media say, "Hey, we're going to fact check this," you know, sometimes it's worthwhile to dig in and say, "Keep looking." Do I agree with your fact check? Mm -hmm. Because you may not. In this particular case, I strongly disagree with it because I think what they've done is they've kind of let the the uh, the assemblyman off the hook, and rather than uh -huh. hold him accountable and say, "Hey, you actually only didn't do this until people complained about it," so therefore some of their fears were legit, right? And we're not going to and the media, but the media downplayed them and they made it out like the, the fears were not legit, and that's that means the media is complicit. Right. And then <clears throat> when you're voting for when, when you get a good candidate that you like that's running, say locally, nationally, state, whatever, um, expect that they work for you. Right. That they come to you and talk to you. Um, and, and, and it doesn't matter whether you're voting somebody for city council or again for some someone in the party that you're in. If you're mm -hmm. like, say, we're, you know, we're in the Libertarian Party. So, you know, I expect that the leaders will come to me. I shouldn't have to chase them down to figure out what the hell they're doing. Right, right. They should come to me. There's a level of accountability inside right. of it. And they should say, hey, here's what we did. Um, and I've said that at, at meetings. I've said, <clears throat> here are the things I promised you I would do. And I said, hold me accountable. Right. And some of those things, I spoke them in error. Hold me accountable. If you, if, if you feel fit, if you see fit. Mm -hmm. I was very honest with people. And that's what you say. That, fuck that. That's what you should expect. And, and I think that that's how it ought to be. I, th I think that one of the failings was that assemblyman right. who wasn't being forthright. In, in, in all honesty, he passed that thing, how many, tried what, four or five times right. to get it through. <laughs> right. And he never like came to the people and said, hey, here's what this is. Or maybe nobody, right. nobody in, in that group came and said, hey, you know what's trying to happen? It seems like this came out just because other right. people. And, and I think that as candidate and as councilman, I think we have an obligation to go, hey guys, and I don't think it's just an after. I think it's a, right. hey guys, here's what's right. coming up. Let's kind of be looking for this. Yep. Because who can you trust? Yeah. At the end of the day, you get the leaders you deserve. Oh, wait, for real? Mm -hmm. Dang it. All right. With that, we're out. It's closing here. Or that closing. Bye. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook 
Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.